In the wake of the horrific massacre in Christchurch, New Zealand, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern thinks the United States should change our gun laws. Take a listen. Just to remind, um, over 110 mass shootings in the United States since 1982, invest according to an investigative site, 15 school shootings alone yeah. this year. It's a really difficult uh, topic to grapple. You can draw a line and say that that does not mean that you need access to military-style semi-automatic weapons and assault mm -hmm. rifles. You do not. And New Zealanders, by and large, absolutely agreed with that position. Australia experienced a massacre and changed their laws. New Zealand had its experience and changed its laws. To be honest with you, I do not understand the United States. First of all, CNN says there have been 15 school shootings in the U.S. in 2019 so far, but that is deliberately misleading. So let's debunk that real quick. In the first 19 weeks of 2019, liberals claim there have been 15 separate school shootings, but they don't define what constitutes a school shooting. If you look carefully at these 15 incidents, they classify as school shootings. The incidents include drug deals, accidental shootings, incidents that happen near schools but are unrelated to the school itself, and a BB gun injury. In fact, schools in the U.S. are actually safer now than they were 20 years ago. According to research by Northeastern University, four times as many children were killed in schools in the early 1990s than now, just so we have our facts straight. But here's the thing. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says, I don't understand the United States or why we don't enact gun control. Let me explain the United States to you, Madam Prime Minister, because you're right. You don't understand the United States. Here in the U.S., 98% of mass shootings in the past 50 years have happened in gun-free zones, thanks to gun control. The majority of gun crimes in the U.S. are committed with firearms that have not been purchased legally, so gun control wouldn't prevent them. Even when you ban guns, look at what happened in London. The murder rate is now higher than the murder rate in New York City. In Australia, violent crime went up after the gun ban. In cities here in America with higher rates of legal gun ownership, the rate of violent crime goes down. In the cities with the strictest gun control laws in America, the rate of violent crime goes up. In Texas, actually, concealed carry permit holders are more law-abiding than police officers. In other words, here in the United States, we not only have a Second Amendment in our Constitution that protects our unalienable right to keep and bear arms, we know that gun control doesn't work. None of the gun control ideas from the left would actually stop shootings. Look at the ideas from the left. Which policies would prevent or stop mass shootings? Age limits? Nope. Most mass shooters are over the age of 21. And the Colorado school shooter, for example, who was under 21, he used a handgun, which was illegal for him to own at that age already. But he got it illegally, so the age limit was moot. What about AR-15 bans? Nope, that wouldn't work either. Only 2.5% of homicides overall in the U.S. every year are committed with rifles. And AR-15s are just a subset of rifles. There are tens of millions of legally owned AR-15s in the U.S. So what percent are used for crime? A fraction of a percent. What about background checks? Again, no. Background checks and gun owner registries, they go hand in hand because the government has to keep a record of citizens who own guns and have passed background checks. So look at history. How have governments used gun registries in the past? Well, Nazi Germany used gun registries to disarm Jews. Canada discontinued their registry recently because the cost was outrageous. They couldn't afford it. They had to use money that could have been used by law enforcement to actually keep people safe. So they ditched it. Do you trust a government that used the IRS to target conservatives to keep a list of gun owners? I don't. What about waiting periods? Again, wouldn't work. What good is a waiting period if the vast majority of gun crimes are committed with firearms obtained illegally? So what about red flag laws? Again, would not work. What good are red flag laws if the government agencies, the law enforcement agencies who promise to keep us safe, drop the ball? Like the FBI and the Broward County Sheriff's Office in Parkland, Florida, the U.S. Air Force in Sutherland Springs. And then when the agencies fail, none of the agencies are ever held accountable or reformed. Madam Prime Minister, if you ban guns, or if we in the United States ban guns, 
then only criminals will have guns. It's not rocket science. If we ban guns, then law-abiding citizens will have no means of defense. You should know this. The shooting at the Second Christchurch Mosque was stopped by a law-abiding Muslim man with a legally owned firearm. Imagine if that Muslim man hadn't been armed. Imagine if he had no means to defend himself. Madam Prime Minister, you're right when you say you don't understand the United States because we in the United States, we would never let that happen here. And that's my final point.